And uh, while there is a huge crowd out there, as Mal Waldron was mentioning, as many as there are out there at the moment, the crowd seems to be growing at something approaching the speed of light. I understand from Ken Davis, our man in the field, that the remaining spots of grass are uh, some of the most valuable real estate in town right now. Is that true, Ken? Neil, I think that's about the best way of putting it. Uh, I've been out here at the Jazz Festival since the first one that was held, and I don't think I've seen a crowd any larger than this one. There are 5,000 seats in the amphitheater area of the Petrillo Music Shell itself, but the shell is situated, for those uh, listening outside of Chicago who might not be familiar with it, in a one-square block area, which is mostly just a large sea of grass. It's about a 1,000 by 1,000 feet, and uh, Obviously, you can get literally 100,000 or more people into this space. As it stands right now, uh, there are people just sitting around with uh, blankets and, as we said earlier, barbecues and just having a little party. And uh, as, as it is now, as you walk away from the uh, chair area and into the grass, you literally can't step from one blanket to another. It's just a, a several acres of uh, used blankets. And where we happen to be standing at the moment is right next to the mixing tower where the, uh, the stage mix is being done. And I'm very pleased to be speaking with Jay Bridgewater, who is with uh, Bridgewater Custom Sound here in Chicago, and the gentleman who was most responsible for setting up what uh, I think I can say objectively is an absolutely incredible sound system. I imagine you must have run into some, uh, some really unique problems trying to give a, 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 lou a loud but high quality signal to this many people. Well, our emphasis is on high quality. We want to try and keep the system as evenly as we can. And this Weirwood is a totally different system, a totally different concept. It was designed on an HP-41 calculating device by Jim Brown. And the system is utilizing the electro voice white constant directivity horns. And with that combination, we have a very smooth uh, coverage to the entire seating area. And as well as we have five delay towers out in the field area. Just and that's really what makes things unique. You have a, a digital delay There's, system. So. Yeah, each tower has its own delay and calculated with so much time so that we don't hear echo and people can hear evenly through the entire People city all block. the way out at the other end by Monroe right. Street. It's a thousand feet it. from the front of the stage to the end of our seating area. And a thousand feet's a long ways for anybody to scream. So uh, the right. system makes it a lot easier and does a nice job. An interesting uh, concept. Thank you very much, Jay. Well, that's uh, the situation for the people who are sitting out on their blankets listening and the people who are down here by the amphitheater listening on the main house system. There are just more people here than we've ever seen for jazz before, and I just spoke with the police moments before going on the air, and they said they're not even bothering to estimate the crowd because it's right... The numbers are rising so fast they can't control it. So that's the situation from here, Dick Buckley. Thank you very much, Ken. Back up on stage, they're setting up for the Ray Barreto Orchestra, as we prepare to hear some Latin jazz, 1982 Latin jazz. Now, of course, if you know the history of jazz, you know that, uh, as Jelly Roll Morton said, the Spanish tinge has been in jazz since the days of New Orleans. And it was in the 1950s, I guess, that uh, Dizzy Gillespie, 1940s, that Dizzy Gillespie began to add more Latin rhythms to the American jazz band. And Linda, we have it the other way around now, right? The Latin band with... Uh, with the jazz, jazz influence. Uh, right. One of the things that, when you were mentioning that Dizzy Gillespie was really the first band leader to incorporate a, a, a large proportion of Latin rhythms into his orchestral comp, uh, concept, for people in the audience, uh, before we got to the broadcast, the festival had been on four days, and one of the headliners on Thursday night at the Chicago Jazz Festival was none, or, none other than George Russell, who was the author of, of what is really one of the first of the Latin jazz classics. He wrote for Dizzy Gillespie's band Cubana B, Cubana Bop, and that's, of course, the recording that brought to uh, jazz music the legendary Cuban percussionist Chano Pozo. Linda, I have to say at this point that uh, while I've been really fascinated by some of the recent developments uh, involving Latinisms and especially even Brazilian music and jazz, uh, still some of my favorite listening in that area is the stuff that I came to earliest, and that is some of the music of Horace Silver in the 1950s. Right, he was, right. He was getting down and he was getting funky, but he was also bringing in the influence of his dad who had uh, come from the islands. And uh, I think that that was the first time a lot of people listening to jazz uh, truly got into the music that had come from south of the border. One of the things that I've noticed as, as a festival participant for the past couple of years is how the proportion of Latin music on the festival has really increased throughout the years in direct proportion to Chicago's uh, Latin population and its increase. 
in past years there was a, a nod or two to the Latin population. There might be one or two Latin bands on the festival, but we've seen a real increase. We've got Ray Barreto tonight, and earlier in the week we had one of the city's great salsa bands, La Confidencia, and a group which uh, owes a lot to the Brazilian uh, rhythms, the very, very lyrical Brazilian rhythms made in Brazil. So it seems that the festival organizers are, are paying a great deal of attention to the demographics in the Chicago area itself in terms of uh, the way they book their festival musically. When I was coming uh, across the park the night that uh, La Confidencia was playing, I was sorry that I didn't get here, get here early enough to hear it in its entirety because it was a powerhouse big band with just great Latin rhythm. I haven't heard this particular edition of the Ray Barreto Orchestra, and I'm uh, looking forward to it. I know that Ray yeah. appeared on so many recording sessions when uh, even straight ahead artists like Gene Ammons for instance. Or Wes Montgomery a, or, or, or Coleman drum. Hawkins. Mm -hmm. So there's probably uh, in this band going to be a lot of the jazz influence in it rather than the, the just uh, the straight mercado rhythm or, or the, the Latin beat that uh, La Confidencia represented. Maybe another influence besides that Linda because uh, Ray Barreto recorded with the Rolling Stones not too long right. ago as well. <laughs> They're testing out the uh, the, the uh, PA setup, as you can plainly hear in the background. In fact, uh, Ray Barreto and some of the musicians are starting to file on stage right now. It's about a 16-piece orchestra, and I think I'm, I'm trying to get a view of it from our vantage point. We're going to be hearing four percussionists, and I would expect, having seen some of these bands in the past, that every other musician in the band is going to be doubling on some kind of percussion instrument as well. You can hear that the audience is ready for this band tonight. They're most ready because uh, Ray Barreto just left my vantage point here on the uh, on the wings on stage right. So and he's I uh, have out the there on the stage. I have the personnel here, if we can get it in quickly, and if I can struggle through the pronunciations. Oscar Hernandez, Charles Hernandez, Ralph Irizarry, uh, Ray Martinez, Tim Wimet, Angel Fernandez, Luis Gonzalez, Kali Aleman, and Joe DeJesus are the members of Ray Barreto's organization. One of the things that always amazes me in a festival of this size is the, the work that the stage crew puts together. I mean, as soon as the, the Lacey Mal Waldron duo was off stage, in fact, before they got off stage, you had about five or six stagehands descending on the stage area and bringing out all, all manner of, of uh, percussive device and uh, microphones as well. We're getting a cue, I believe, in just a minute. Uh, Paul Serrano, who is also of Latin descent himself, is going to be coming out to introduce the band. Ray Barreto right now is in the midst of the whole orchestra. And we are waiting for... Do they have a downbeat in Latin jazz? How do you count off a Latin jazz number? I guess... No lo sé. <laughs> <laughs> Unos, duos, tres, or, or whatever. But no matter how they get it off, we're waiting for the great sounds that are going to take place. Talking about the stage crew and the way they operate, it's uh, one of the things that can be... Uh, can kind of make or break a festival, depending on how fast they do it. And, of course, there's always... A long, long pause Here comes between Paul a combo Serrano. and an MC. Here we Ladies are with the MC. As you all know, this is being broadcast live on WBEZ. WBEZ, all right. Uh, we'd like to keep it moving, but we do have one little problem, and that is that the aisles are really full. And, and they've asked me to ask the people in the aisles to please try to clear out so we can keep moving on with the show because it's causing a hazard. The light is in my eye. I can't see whether or not you're moving, but please help us out on that, please, will you? So if you're in the aisle, try to move out and let's clear the aisle so we can keep on going. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we have a real rare treat for you. Many of the American people are familiar with the word salsa. Perhaps they're familiar. Perhaps they're familiar with the word. Not yet. Not, I haven't finished my lines yet. Be cool. You know. Perhaps you're familiar with mambo and, and cha-cha-cha, wabanco, and things of that nature. Ladies and gentlemen, what's coming up now is Latin music. Ladies and gentlemen, what's coming up now, the type of music and the way these guys play it, it is hip. Some of you know it. Join me in a great round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming to Chicago the very wonderful 
Ray Barreto, yeah.
On, uh, on trumpet, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tim we met. On trombone, Mr. Jose de Jesus. On piano, Mr. Oscar Hernandez. A little tribute yes. to one of the uh, great people who have not only contributed to jazz, but also to Latin music in his own way, the wonderful Dizzy Gillespie. We'd like to do a tune that we recorded a couple of albums ago, it speaks of a hero in the uh, Puerto Rican community who fought for the dignity and the respect of Puerto Rico, and we call this Alversus Campos. Tick. <laughs>
Thank you.
We'd like to uh, say hello to a dear friend, a gentleman that I had the pleasure of saying he sang with us for a year, but it was a beautiful year, Mr. Tito Allen, who's here in Chicago. Let's say hello to Tito Allen. Okay, all right. Tito will be here. We're going to see Tito tonight. Yes. Yeah. He'll be at 2745 West North Avenue. La Concha. Okay? Yes. Yeah. We'll be there, Tito. Okay, Tito. okay gracias, Ray. Y ahora, we'd like to feature an arrangement by our pianist de Puerto Rico, el señor Oscar Hernández. We'd like to feature Oscar on piano de Chick Corría. Spain, España. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much.
Oscar Hernández. Cuéntale, Oscar.
Ray Barreto's big band thrilling the crowd here with their Latin music. You're listening to Chicagoland Public Radio's live coverage of Mayor Jane M. Byrne's Chicago Cool Jazz Festival. The festival is produced by the Mayor's Office of Special Events, with all performances coordinated by the Jazz Institute of Chicago. We'll pause now for 10 seconds to allow our affiliate stations to identify themselves. This is Chicagoland Public Radio at 91.5 FM, WBEZ Chicago. And we still have more to come, but uh, once again, a complete change in music, a complete change in rhythm, and the jazz fans here in Chicago dug it. Probably the largest, well, without a doubt, the largest crowd this year, and certainly competing with one of the largest crowds that they've ever had at the jazz festival. And you could hear the reaction to the Ray Ray Barreto band. Linda? Well, you know, I got a chance uh, during the set to go through the crowd as much as one can. I'm not really going to try to give an official police estimate, but it looked to be between 45 and 50,000 people. And the wonderful thing about that is in going through the crowds in the aisles, you got a chance to see some, some pairs of dancers sprinkled throughout this whole park. Wonderfully intricate steps, and they looked all like uh, extras from the TV show Dance Fever. And in speaking of dancing, I also watched the band as well. And a lot of the Latin bands today are using uh, some very intricate choreography in their front line. And I think a lot of the Latin bands in the 1970s were uh, inspired to do that by some of the soul bands of the 60s, like The Temptations and Earth, Wind, and Fire. And Ray Barreto's conga solo, have you ever heard 50,000 people clapping in time to a Latin rhythm? Neil Tesser is backstage with Ray Barreto right now. Thank you, Linda. Ray Barreto's here, and he's heaving. You mentioned 50,000 people clapping in time to a conga solo. You've got to put out a lot of uh, just about solar energy to get that many people all beating in time. Well, we have a large family. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't all your family out there tonight, Ray. It was a uh, really a fiery, fiery set. It's the kind of set that I would expect to knock the power out of this place if it hadn't already happened last night at another set. How long has this particular band been together? going on uh, two and a half years now. And uh, you had done some uh, Latin big bands earlier in your career, I guess in the 1960s, and then you've been doing a lot of work with other other types of ensembles. What led you to go back and put together this kind of band again? Well, it's, for me, it's, it's um, the best of both worlds. It's not a, a super large band. It's 10 people, but we get a big sound. And uh, individually, the guys are very talented, and there's a lot of energy on the band. And we try to uh, blend our charts so that they're, um, for the Latin aficionado, he can uh, relate to it. And for the jazz lover, he feels a kinship to that music also because he hears contemporary harmonies and he hears melodies that uh, uh, we try to do things like Night Tunisia and Spain and things like that, that sort so that uh, without sacrificing anything musically we try to, to present the best of all the musical worlds. You touch on something that I've always wanted to ask you in case I met you and that is how much of a, of a specifically jazz musician do you think of yourself as? I know I was doing a little research and you're not in the encyclopedias of jazz, can't find your name. It's like they don't think of you, some of the people who write these books, as a jazz musician, but I always have. Well, uh, thank you very much. My first influence and my first love was jazz, even before I rediscovered my own Latin roots. Um, And I started playing with uh, the first people I played with, with people like Dizzy and Charlie Parker, and uh, we used to have the jam sessions on between 110th and 145th Street in Harlem in New York, and and I recorded with people like Wes Montgomery and George Benson and uh, Red Garland and Lou Donaldson, Gene Ammons. Uh, the list goes and, on and on, yes, certainly. And, uh, but you see, I never concern myself about classification. I leave that to the historians and I leave that to, uh, that's their job. My job is to play the best music I know how. And thankfully, you've been leaving some wonderful music here tonight in Chicago. Thanks very much for talking to us tonight, Ray Barretta. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. 
And uh, while Ray Barreto's music certainly provides uh, food for the ears and uh, food for the soul, as a lot of people were noticing out there tonight, there's a lot of other kinds of food going on in Grant Park this evening here at the uh, fourth annual Chicago Jazz Festival, the Chicago Cool Jazz Festival. And Ken Davis, my colleague in the field, has uh, been noting some of the food matters. Ken? I don't know about colleague in the field, Neil. It's more like uh, colleague in the crowd right now. We're just about shoulder to shoulder with just tens of thousands of people all over the place. And it's a very interesting scene out here uh, <clears throat> right now because as uh, you and Linda had been mentioning, there was uh, much of that, uh, what do you want to call it, dancing in the aisles. Like these folks, you were dancing around, weren't you? Definitely, definitely. Barreto estaba tremendo. <laughs> and for the rest of us? He was great. He was great. <laughs> what, what was so good about it? What it gets had you... those shoulders moving. It's those congas mm -hmm. that do it. Yes. There sure were enough shoulders moving around out That's there. That's right. Yeah. Okay, well, listen. Go out there and, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Get another one going. <laughs> Neil, uh, thank you. One of the things that uh, you were talking about, Neil, was food. And as we uh, move a little bit through the crowd here, we're kind of getting shoved along just by the sheer uh, momentum of the crowd. Ken, I noticed a plate of sausages out there waiting to be cooked up about there 20 is, minutes ago. I stepped there, out for some fresh air. There is such an incredible variety of food out here. It's almost as large as the variety of people. There are different sizes and shapes of people all over the place, and uh, the food is just absolutely remarkable, both the, uh, the kind that people are bringing in themselves and otherwise. But uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about was this whole notion of Chicago as fest city. And uh, it, we're getting ready for yet another one. This won't even be over before they begin a taste of Chicago and the uh, Labor Day Festival that will be taking place right here at Petrillo. Count Basie's going to be here on Monday, and there's this uh, rather bizarre custom that was begun a couple of years ago by My Mayor Byrne uh, called the Taste of Chicago, where they close off four or five streets around the downtown area, fill them with great big tents, and all the restaurants in town come around and uh, serve up samples of their food. You have to pay for it, of course. But uh, it usually draws, oh, a couple of hundred thousand people or so, and that's exactly what's expected here Monday night for the Grucci Brothers Fireworks Festival. And I think we could probably go on for two hours just listing the festivals that there have been in Chicago in the last couple of months and uh, and the ones that are coming up in the future they even have uh, autumn fair and everything else so just to so get this whole schedule straight Ken the jazz festival is continuing tonight and tomorrow night Sunday when we'll be right. bringing it over national public radio to our audience and then on Monday they start with a food festival at the same time they're having a Labor Day festival with fireworks and a concert in this same spot and a parade which is supposed to be a parade to beat all parades uh, the mayor has promised that this labor parade uh, that's going to happen down Michigan Avenue is going to be the largest parade Chicago has seen in the uh, post-war years so uh, it's supposed to last four or five hours and it's all just a part of uh, this rather remarkable policy the city is engaged in only in really the last four or five years of just uh, you know just throwing everything open every park every open space there are neighborhood festivals and everything imaginable there's always something going on but uh, locally speaking this crowd uh, we have not been able as a matter of fact to get an official police estimate despite even talking with the commander here just a short while ago they really haven't been able to do it because it's very dark and uh, you can't really count heads, but all they know is it's pretty much shoulder to shoulder for one entire city block. And you can fit an awful lot of human bodies into that space even when they are all jumping up and down to the, to the rhythm. So uh, let's just say there are lots of people out here. The weather is absolutely incredible. It's a nice, cool, crisp evening, not even a breeze anywhere. And the sky is clear and tomorrow's going to be nice. There are little kids running all over the place. There are barbecues alight. There are, as you mentioned, piles of uncooked sausages and uh, uh, cut glass crystal for the uh, pouring of white wine out there on the blankets and just about everything imaginable. So uh, from out here in the crowd, things are looking real good, and I'm sure they're looking pretty good up there on stage too, Dick. I'm envious, and I wish you'd bring me up some of that sausage so we could have a sandwich well, up I'll here. I'll see what I can find and see if we can get something up there for you. Okay, And great. there are probably people out here listening right now on their radios if you want to send something up to Dick Buckley. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know I could, I could use some right now.